everybody and welcome to a weekly wrap-up where I don't have that much to say. Um, this past week I didn't do that much reading because I've been finishing this thing. You can see the border on it now. Um, this is my afghan that I've been working on for three years and I just sat down over the past couple of weeks and finished this sucker. It took a bit longer than I expected to because I got 90% done with the border on the edge and realized that I hated it, so I ripped the entire thing out and I did a completely different one that took even longer to do, and I had just barely enough yarn, which is really important because I bought all the yarn for this project three years ago and it was rather difficult to find it then, and so if I ran out, nothing was gonna save me. So um, I'm not entirely done with it yet. You can't see the wrong side, which has all the ends. I still need to tuck in. It's my least favorite part. And I will do that while listening to audio books or podcasts this coming week. Uh, but that, that is what I spent a lot of my time on in the evenings and such this weekend. Um, it's the reason why I didn't finish this book yesterday. Um, so two of the things that I will be talking about soon, but not in this video, are The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead, which I did read last week. and I will talk about that in the same Arthur C. Clarke Award batch wrap-up um, after I have read The Handmaid's Tale uh, because I want to talk about them in the same video. I haven't done a Clarke batch wrap-up in a while and I need to get back on to doing that. So um, short preview would be The Underground Railroad, good, depressing, brutal to my emotions, very honest, and underwhelming in some regards, and The Handmaid's Tale um, a lot easier to get through than I thought it was going to be. Both of these literary fiction, not science fiction. I'll save my rant for the future video. Um, so the things that I actually did finish this past week, um, I finished A Long Day in Litchford by Paul Cornell. This is the third novella in the Litchford series coming out from Tor.com. This novella comes out in November and I will do an actual review of it closer to November. Uh, it was very good. I, I really enjoy the series overall. I'm pretty invested in the characters, but this book felt like a setup and a bridge, like that middle book syndrome to the next really big explosive event. So I'm looking forward to the next novella bit more than I enjoyed the actual plot of this one, if, if that makes any sense. Um, my two favorite reads of the week, I read Amber Lowe by Laura Elena Donnelly. This was a five-star book. This was a great book and uh, a debut novel too. Like Donnelly has some writing chops, guys. Um, I think people have said that this is based on like 1930s Germany, Berlin, and essentially, I guess, the, the rise of fascism and uh, nationalist party, um, because that's exactly what happens in Amberlo. Amberlo is the capital city of a country called Geta. This is fantasy in terms of it's set in a secondary world, not in terms of magic. I don't believe there's any magic in this world. Um, but the one state party called the Ospies is gaining power in, in Geta, and I think in other countries as well. Um, it is nationalist, scarily so, so essentially I think it's a fascist party, and our, our three main characters in the book are kind of sitting in the pot while the water starts to boil, and the question is, will they make it out in time, or will they sit there for so long that they don't realize that they're dying in the hot water and they can't save themselves? Um, so the, the, I guess the main character is Cyril, who works for a spy agency in Amberlo for Forgetta, um, who essentially gets flipped by the Ospies in order to save his own skin because they catch him undercover. Um, his lover, Ari, who works in the theater and uh, who is a smuggler, you know, essentially Cyril, has an affair with Ari and he should turn him in and he, he doesn't because, you know. <laughs> and the third person is Cordelia who um, is a dancer at the theater where Ari also works and she uh, works for him smuggling tar and she becomes Cyril's fake mistress when he joins the Ospies um, because guess what? They hate gay people and he has to prove that he's at least trying to not be gay. Um, the story doesn't have a happy ending, by the way. It, it, it was really good, but 
brutal to the emotions. The first half of this book, I really enjoyed the characters. I mean, these are really flushed out, true to life people with their own flaws and, and strengths and you know, you don't agree with a lot of the stuff that they do, but you see how they're trying to survive. And I just, I really got into these characters. But in the first half, I wasn't so, so sure about the plot. I didn't know if I, if I cared about this kind of plot. But then the second half hit, and I think that the first half of the novel did such a wonderful job at taking its time, establishing the characters, establishing the world, specifically in the city of Amberlo. What is it like to live in Amberlo as um, a, a richer, more elite person like Cyril, or um, you know, as a theater person, as one of the the coming from like the the, the low life areas of the city, like Cordelia does. Um, what is that like, and how how does this rise of fascism and, and nationalism affect everybody in in every profession? And then, you know, the, the plot comes out very organically from that setup, but I didn't appreciate it all until almost near the very end. The end was brilliant and devastating as a tiny glimmer of hope, which keeps you going. I cannot wait for the next book. And the final thing I want to talk about that I finished this past week was just a fun ride, and that was Just One Damn Thing After Another by Jodi Taylor. This is the first book in the Chronicles of St. Mary's, which you may be familiar with because Caitlin from Kitty G has talked about the entire series, I think, multiple times, and I think Elizabeth from Books and Pieces talked about the first couple of books as well. And I'm so glad that they did, because I, I heard them reviewing them and thought, I really want to read those because they sound like fun. And I went into the library a couple weeks ago when I, I saw this first book on the new bookshelf, and I literally grabbed it with both hands and said, yes! <laughs> and I read that sucker. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, in the initial stages, this book reminded me a lot of the setup of uh, The Rise and Fall of Dio Dio by uh, Neil Stevenson and Nicole Gallen, in the sense that they're both um, time travel science fiction slash fantasy books. Uh, I think that Dio Dio was fantasy, whereas uh, the, the St. Mary's Chronicles are more science fictional in it, to my mind. There's no magic implied anywhere in this, and I, I can accept time travel as a sci-fi device. It's pretty standard sci-fi device, actually. Um, so I think, I think what reminded me so strongly of Dio Dio when I was first reading this is that you have a female character who goes to an institution that uh, says we have top secret things we can't tell you until you sign all the papers, and then she is, you know, inducted into the Institute in time travel. And a lot of this book is her, her training and the first um, historian projects that she works on where she goes back in time with uh, a team of people. Um, it's very episodic. This is the one thing that I thought was a slight flaw in this book. The structure was a bit odd in that it would peak with a problem and then solve the problem and then peak with another problem and solve the problem. I wasn't quite sure where the first book would end, but I think the, the gist of the, of the series overall is that you have the, the people um, at St. Mary's with the time travel pods contemporary to Max, and then you have people in a future time who steal the pods and basically want to exploit the past and they don't want this to happen in the future. Um, so I, I am in for whatever happens. I think the characters are delightful. I really like Max and the kind of romantic love story she has in the first book uh, was great because that wasn't the point of the book. It was kind of a side plot that was handled well and wrapped up. There are no loose ends in that that, make, that become a cliffhanger for the next book, and I appreciate it when, when the romance subplot for a woman doesn't become the point of the story overall, so that, that was fantastic. And I went out and I got the next two books immediately because uh, my other library system, I think, has the entire series, and I hope to like binge read all of them. They're just, they're gonna be a lot of fun. Um, so that is it. Maybe I did this in record time. I don't know. Um, housekeeping note, I have no idea if I will have a video out this coming week because, well, you know, I, I have to finish this book before I can film my next video. This rarely happens. Usually when I sit down to film on Sunday, I just magically have video ideas, but that didn't really happen this weekend. Between 
cooking lots of things and working on the Afghan project. I just haven't been thinking about what videos I'm going to make about books, so hopefully if I disappear for a couple more days than usual, you guys won't mind. I'll at least be back for a Friday reads, if nothing else, so yeah. Oh, oh yes, and, and the Hugo Awards happened on Friday. I, uh, I didn't post a video that day. I was going to do Friday reads, but my day was so busy and I ended up just tweeting about the Hugo Awards ceremony as it was happening. I so deeply regret not going to Helsinki this year. I really felt like I was missing out and I missed seeing a lot of people in person and being at the ceremony in person everything. There's nothing quite like it. Watching it online is not, not the same thing as being there. Um, so I am very much committed to going to San Jose next year and I'm girding myself to verbally commit to going to uh, Dublin in 2019. I suppose I should work on getting my passport in the next two years, right? I think I can get it in the next two years, though who knows what could happen in 24 months, at least given the way that the last eight months have gone in this country. I am not going to go on a political rant, but anyway, that's my Sunday morning thoughts. Um, I'll be back to talk to you guys again soon. Hope you have a wonderful remainder of your weekend. Um, let me know if you're going to be seeing the solar eclipse next Monday. Yeah, because I'm. that's going to be what I'm doing on the 21st. So um, until later, guys. Bye.